Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the 6-5 podcast. Daniel Newman here. 6-5 is on the road. We are here in Las Vegas and we are joined today by Mike Ron Sumit Sudana. He is the Chief Business Officer at EVP. We're gonna be talking about trends in AI and memory, one of the biggest and most important components to making all this AI stuff work. And it's been a year since we had Sumit on the show and it's exciting to bring him back. So without further ado, Sumit, welcome to the, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here again with you. Yeah, it's great to have you back. It's been a voracious 14 months since the advent of ChatGPT. And I think everybody felt it at, at slightly different times. Some of us felt it immediately when that trend line kind of hit. I remember there was a moment where I was in Redmond, maybe February, at a Microsoft event where they announced the Bing with the ChatGPT in it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is real. And I think depending on, you know, if you're a PC maker, if you're a data center, GPUs, if you're in the software space. But all year, every event was all about AI. CES here, mm -hmm. no different. So let's start there. Let's talk about kind of the Micron perspective. You heard me tee this up about memory and being one of the most important components, but kind of how is Micron thinking about and looking at this really important inflection point with AI? Yeah, it's, it's a great question because AI has been around, as you know, for decades and research has been going on, progress has been made um, over this time. And both processing, memory, and then data have been important elements to make AI work. Um, and of course, improving algorithms. But something special happened with generative AI. And uh, I think this whole wave that we are on now with generative AI um, and transformer technology uh, is really going to usher in uh, exponential growth in the capabilities of these systems. And this exponential growth is going to drive new applications. It's going to be very disruptive. It's going to start out in certain areas, but then spread to all different parts of the economy. And it's going to start out in the data center, then spread to edge devices as well and it's going to be uh, all requiring a lot of memory uh, as this comes along because as you know, um, all of the data that's in these large language models needs to be analyzed, needs to be moved in and out of the processors and high bandwidth memory and uh, high capacity uh, memory DIMMs are going to be super critical for that. So it's a very exciting time. Uh, it's going to be very disruptive for the economy a lot of growth ahead and we are very excited. Yeah, and, and and if I was in your shoes and I was in the memory business, I would say after what has been a couple of more challenging years, that this is a really exciting moment. And by the way, across the portfolio, because it really doesn't matter if it's you know the device or if it's in the data center, memory is going to be growing. It's going to have a very significant uh, symbiotic sort of relationship with all this compute. And so last year, so it was all about the data center. You know, I actually kind of, I, I, in jest, I sort of say 23 was the year of the GPU. Mm -hmm. and that was really it. I mean, if you're in the AI space, there was a couple other companies that really saw a benefit, but unless you were selling GPUs and, and really almost only one company was doing that, everyone else was sort of trying to find their AI legs. Mm -hmm. But what we know now in, in our intelligence summit, you know, our research is showing that this is going to be a year of implementation. Mm -hmm. So we are moving from kind of, building out the infrastructure. We've heard companies like uh, Cisco's Chuck Robbins, he came out and said, uh, last year uh, people were buying a lot of gear, now we've got all this backlog. Mm -hmm. It's an implementation year. So talk about kind of how the data center is gonna transform. How do we get to implementation? And how does uh, Micron really see data, data centers changing because of this AI growth? Yeah, the AI growth is um, really in its extremely early innings. And thus far in 2023, as you have mentioned, um, it has been a lot of focus on training. So training infrastructure in the cloud, a um, lot of GPUs and, um, and memory that goes along with it deployed in the cloud. And as these trained systems become capable and have applications, they're going to start moving into inferencing and a lot of that inferencing will take place first in the cloud, and it will have a lot of growth, as you can imagine. You know, if you take a, a simple thing like uh, Copilot for programming, uh, that's one 
particular use case. There are going to be there are going to be a lot of use cases, but that's just one of them, and that requires a lot of inferencing uh, infrastructure to be deployed for programmers over time around the world to be able to use that capability. And after you know we focus on all of the training and inferencing in the cloud, you're going to look at growth on the edge in devices, so smartphones. They'll have their own smaller version of large language models, so call it you know, 10 billion parameters or so. And to implement those, you'll need 50% more average capacity of DRAM, uh, four to eight gigabytes more of DRAM, so more than 50%. Uh, on the memory side in a smartphone. And similarly on the PC as well, four to eight gigabytes of extra DRAM in a PC to be able to do a lot of applications locally on that device that don't require a cloud backend to be able to do all of the inferencing, a lot of it that can be done on the PC and on the smartphone. So those products are going to start coming out in the second half of calendar 24. And calendar 2025, which we have said we expect record TAM for memory, is going to be the first full year where we would have um, those new products on the uh, PC and smartphone side to address these models, as well as ongoing continued growth in the cloud for both training and inferencing. So 25 uh, VC is going to really build on the momentum in 24 and become a, a really, really big year. Yeah, you sort of uh, gave me the gambit, the, the whole continuum, right? We started in the data center, and I love what you said about inference. You know, you heard me and maybe my simplistic, uh, 23 being the year of the GPU, 23 was about training. 23 was, most of the spend went into putting the infrastructure in place to allow to train all these LLMs, and really only a small, it was like less than 20 companies that you were really doing business with, the ones that were buying the massive infrastructure, AI and traditional hyperscale. There's a little bit of enterprise, but just the biggest of the biggest. And then you, you really have everyone else now, and everyone else wants to consume AI. And when you consume AI, it's inference. Mm -hmm. And to do that, you have to put significant amount of compute, and these are, you know, you're hearing about A6, you're hearing about these special chips that are going to be designed for AI. The big talk of a CES here is, uh, you know, the NPUs, mm -hmm. right? So uh, I've had the chance to sit down with a number of the leaders of the PC businesses at the OEMs, and you didn't say the words, Summit, but AI PC, yes. right? That's the words. I don't know if you're allowed to say it, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> um, and, and, and this is a super cycle. Mm -hmm. And the reason you're predicting the massive TAM is a combination of more inference in the data center and more inference on the device. And by the way, the device is going to have to navigate. Yes. Sometimes on, a, say, a 200 billion parameter model, it might be on the device. On these trillion parameter, it doesn't matter. You're not going to be able to put enough compute or memory right. <laughs> on the device to successfully do low latency inference. But talk about the CES pivot. Talk about, because we're here, consumer show, all about AI PC. Uh, I've kind of teased it a bit, but you know, this has to be just a massive opportunity for, for Micron right now to attach its innovation, some of the things you've been working over the last few years, mm -hmm. um, and to really grab the market, the imagination, and to take some credit for all these cool things we're going to be able to do on PCs. Yeah, the PC market is going to get rejuvenated. The smartphone market is going to get rejuvenated by this. Um, because, you know, even smartphones, right? I mean, we have AI-capable smartphones that will be coming out later this year. Uh, and again, uh, just like PCs, PCs and smartphones, if I just take that as a category of consumer electronics devices that are going to become a lot more capable, um, you're going to see uh, definitely uh, the extra memory, the extra compute capability in these platforms to be able to do these uh, smaller version of LLMs uh, on these devices. And it's going to uh, really energize these markets because we had a big boom in PC unit sales uh, at the time of COVID, mm -hmm. and they went up all the way to 340 million units from roughly 260 million units a year. And then they have come down all the way. Now PC sales are running below pre-COVID levels on an annualized unit basis. So uh, you're getting into 2024 and 2025 when a replacement cycle is going to start and how 
you know, how good is it that we'll have all these new capabilities in AI PCs for people to use as a catalyst to upgrade their PCs that were bought in 2020 and 2021. So it's going to kick off a replacement cycle with these higher capacity, more capable hardware uh, late 24 and into 25 and 26, and that's going to be a big growth driver. PCs and smartphones make up half of the memory market in terms of consumption, and so that's going to be a big tailwind because smartphones, you know, on the other hand, have had um, in 2023 unit sales that hit 10-year lows. Yep. So the average age of the smartphone in the hands of consumers is becoming uh, pretty old now. And so, again, consumers need a reason, a catalyst to be wanting to upgrade their smartphone. And this is a great catalyst because, again, a lot more capable hardware will be coming later in 2024. And um, we believe it will rejuvenate that market. So a lot of that edge device capability will get kick-started. And again, I mean, the exciting part is it's only in the very early innings. I mean, while all of this stuff is happening in the edge with early models of applications that can help consumers, um, even if you look at training and inferencing in the cloud, uh, you're going to start seeing a lot more specialized models that get trained. For example, let's say you're in the legal profession. Having an LLM just focused on the legal profession and be very, no. very deep in that area and as you know, every country has its own laws. So there's a lot of uh, work in that vertical alone to be able to create a very sophisticated capability. Um, let's say the medical field, right? Again, a very deep capability can be created uh, where a model can be trained just on medical data alone. So there are a lot of verticals where training will happen in very specific verticals and then there'll be a lot of inferencing uh, when this is deployed to large number of users, whether it's doctors in the healthcare field or consumers who want to take ownership of their healthcare or access to medicine in countries where you know, doctors are uh, in shortage. Um, so a lot of that is ahead of us, so we're very, very early innings. We are looking at a 10-year, 20-year uh, growth cycle here. Yeah, all of those conceptual use cases, which of course we were using AI for those things before generative. Generative mm -hmm. has kind of been the killer app it for is. AI, right? Yes. But you know, it's going to drive the need for more powerful and more frequent upgrades. And you're seeing this across the board, by the way. It's devices, mm -hmm. it's gonna be phones, because the reason phone sales, mobile devices hit all time low is because I'll be, I'll just, as, even not as an analyst, I'll say as a consumer, mm -hmm. I can't figure out what I get yeah. In terms of an experience when I'm, so you know, you see like companies come out with their new spatial computing technologies and you go, okay, here's an, here's an app. Is this a killer app? I mm -hmm. don't know. Maybe there's a several, you know, 10, 20, 50 million units for a, a Vision Pro or something like that. But the point is, is like the AI PC, the AI en enabled phone, the LLM locally run that can handle your uh, personal concierge services. Mm -hmm. That's game changing when you go, well, you can't do it on this one anymore. You yes, can't right. upgrade it. And by the way, cars, you didn't really mention cars. I know that's part of the Micron business. And yes. this is, CS is kind of an auto show. Yeah, I mean, there's the a lot of uh, auto companies here, really cool technology, really fun stuff to see how automobiles are evolving. And you're right, I mean, it's a big business for Micron because we are number one in the world in automotive electronics and we have um, very high share in automotive compared to our otherwise um, supply share in DRAM. And uh, it's a very fast growing business for us because automotive business for us has been hitting new records on a quarterly basis for several quarters, even as the rest of the business had been challenged with the market environment in 2023. So this continues to be a growth area because we obviously have the trends of EV, which has a lot more electronics content in the car, as well as you know all of the infotainment. And, and even if you don't, think about autonomous vehicles, just the ADAS capabilities that are improving L2, in the car, all L2, plus, yeah. all of that uses dramatically more memory but content. The software-defined vehicle exactly. is creating, you know, it, it's a, it's orders of magnitude more silicon in each yes. vehicle. So you don't actually need more, more vehicles to be crea created or sold to sell more chips. That's right. And so the full it's stack- It's a content increase. Yeah. It's a content increase, which 
is tremendous. And it's of course, the yeah. overall disaggregation of silicon, MPU, VPU, DPU, IPU, CPU, is creating, and memory of course, yes. is creating the need for more disparate silicon, which of course, as the TAM grows, as the overall units grow, mm -hmm. and memory is a corollary. And it's, Gen it's AI is going to come into the car too, right? And it's going to create a lot of capabilities um, and make it more natural for drivers and passengers to interact so, with the car. Saw a few demos here. Yes. Um, and they were, they were pretty cool. I yes. always wondered what that light was that was on. My wife's like, you should probably check that out. I'm like, <laughs> I'll just drive until the wheel falls off. But uh, you know, cars have been pretty smart, but, but not that smart. So we have just a couple minutes left. Um, how does this how does this go from here? What's the next uh, wave? Uh, I think you know the industry in 2023 went through a lot of challenges on the supply versus demand side. And so a lot of supply has gotten cut in the form of CapEx reductions, in the form of underutilization, which is now transforming into lower uh, structural wafer fab capacity. So coming into this upturn, uh, the supply side uh, has been um, definitely being reduced. 2023 is one of those very rare, if uh, first year in the history of the industry where bit supply growth was negative uh, because of all of these actions. And in 2024, uh, till the profitability gets back to robust levels, the appetite to invest in CapEx is still low um, because we have to be disciplined about this. Uh, and Micron is certainly uh, continuing to see uh, reductions in 2024 uh, wafer fab equipment spending uh, over 2023. Um, and so we are staying very disciplined on the supply side. And then all of these dynamics we discussed on the demand side are really helping drive um, improved uh, pricing. Uh, we expect pricing to continue to improve throughout uh, 2024, which would then drive uh, improved financial performance as well. Absolutely, I see it's gonna be a memory moment and some of that pricing power comes back. And, and anyone that follows the sort of cycles of semiconductors understands this, but perhaps one of the biggest, if not the biggest cycle we've seen, at least in my life, is gonna be powered by this AI movement. So Sumit, I really appreciate you spending some time here with me at CES 2024. Thank you, Dan, appreciate it. All right, everybody, hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of our 6.5 coverage here at CES 2024. And of course, join us for all of our episodes of the 6.5. We've got On the Road, Insider, In the Booth, our 6.5 Summit. We appreciate you tuning in. But for now, it's time to say goodbye. So see you later.